Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Hey, this week's show is going to be a little different. We're going to tell a story about a family business that was started over 100 years ago, Richfield Farms, that's located in Clifton, New Jersey. Richfield Farms still thrives today, but its matriarch, Eleanor Schroeder, just passed away this week. Every small business has a story, but this one is personal. See, Eleanor was my mother. From immigration through Ellis Island to pandemics, depression, recessions, wars, to today's Richfield Farms has survived and is in its fourth generation. We're going to share with you a story of survival that, interestingly enough, focus on business women. So stay tuned and we'll be back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609 685 1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t shirt. Call or text us at 609 685 1880. That's 609 685 1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Before the weather gets too cold, now's the time to apply Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns. Grass absorbs the greatest amount of nutrients later in the season, just prior to the winter months. This 25-5-6 analysis also contains five micronutrients, boron, copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns builds hardiness, stem strength, and disease resistance, ensuring a healthy, stable plant which can endure the hardships of winter better than weaker plants. Lawns fed in the fall are first to green up in the spring. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Furlum's Winterizer for established lawns and expect to have the best looking lawn in the neighborhood. Smeltzer and Sun Feed Supply, Route 9, Cape May, New Jersey. Mustardy Nursery, Chester Pike, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Bloomers Home and Garden Center, Herfel Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, Mm -hmm. thank you very much because you put the Today's Show together. Yes. I hope you're ready. I am ready. You're ready? Yes, this is the best. Mark said go. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Well, first of all, you know, our prayers are with the the Schroeder family, and uh, we love you, Len, and and, and the family, and uh, we really, uh, I know we that uh, your mom passed away October 24th, uh, Lord's Day, Mm -hmm. and she was a beautiful 92 years old, and we are so uh, glad that we have uh, a mom you know, I call her mom too because uh, I, you know, I've met her and uh, oh, yeah. I feel like family, of course, with you. Well, you are, and um, you are. You know, it's it's uh, it hurts all the way through. You know, everybody uh, yeah. is hurting, and uh, she she led a great life. Yeah, she she is in a much better place, mm-hmm. and she that uh, you know she she passed her tryout. Yes, <laughs> <There you laughs> right? so our life here on her life here on earth mm-hmm. is over and there is no pain and that she right. is in a much better place. Amen. And uh, actually it's um mm-hmm. I, I have not been upset. I'm I'm 
excited for her to yes to go on to that next right part of it's eternity yes yes you know we're kind of we're grieving but we're in celebration also and right. I, I think you know right now we want to celebrate Eleanor's life and Absolutely. that's what we're going to do today Absolutely. and first of all I want to really get into a little bit of the historical background okay of your of your mom and uh, how she got where she got Okay. And uh, maybe we can go a little bit further back. Uh, uh -oh. You want to start out with uh, your grandmother? Yes, doctor. <laughs> 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 so where do you want to start? Yeah, we'll start out with, uh, you know, your grandma coming here to America. Okay. So my grandmother came with her family and mm -hmm. that she had brothers and, and mom and dad. And that came like how you see like those old black and white movies of You're people right. shuffling through Ellis Island. Uh -huh. She was there. Oh, yeah. She was one, she was four years old. <laughs> oh wow. When she came from okay. Ellis Island mm -hmm. and that, uh, the family, they were farmers from Holland and they were right. from Lowe's down in Holland Okay, and that they wow. settled in Clifton, which is right outside of New York city. So it's in New Jersey, mm -hmm. Passaic County. And it's, uh, I mean, it was a farming community back then. Oh, no kidding. Right. Yeah, so they had a they had a small farm, and that that's what they did. They were they farmers, did did farmers, and yeah. they were, and they were the struggling immigrants. Yes, they were hard workers, huh? Yep. There are stories. My my grandfather was mm -hmm. not the nicest man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey. you think about the news stories today. I right. Mean, yeah, he'd be in jail. Oh, um, <laughs> he used to make um, uh -huh. my grandmother go. And pick coal up from the the train tracks of right. where it fell off of the cars, so they could heat their home. Wow! I mean, That's they amazing. were they. It was a struggle. I mean, oh, they yeah. they came from imagine. you know uh, they came from being so poor that they needed to to find someplace Something. else, and then right. came here and were still poor. But they at least it was the you know the city on a hill. It was America that it America. was that it was the opportunity. Sure. That they craved. Sure. Did they know uh, the English or not? Uh, no. They yeah. had to learn English. Wow. See yeah, that? they need to learn English. Mm -hmm. So um, there were, I think there were some family members here ahead of time, mm -hmm. but uh, it was a tough life. Oh, yeah. It was imagine. a tough life. There were no yeah. child labor laws then. Mm -hmm. And that, wow. uh, you know, I... Gosh, I can, I can remember a long story about, uh, I'll make it short as possible, mm -hmm. As a probably middle school aged kid, that she was put into a factory to clean toilets. Wow, oh boy! <laughs> and that she cried to her mother, oh. saying, "I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to." She was crying, right. and that it was just, you know, it was a, a scary, scary it was a scary um, situation for her, and right. it was like it, it in our family lore. It was the one of the only times that. Her mother stood up to her father, mm -hmm. and you know it was a different world back then. Oh, sure, it was. A, oh, yeah. It was a different world. Yeah. Um, often, I think that where you hear about, you know, men and women's relationships now, right? It's like, what are you talking about? You should have gone back. <laughs> go back in time. We're yeah. not that way anymore. <laughs> no, or most not. of us aren't. No, um, but yeah, it was definitely a, a domineering father that, you know, did his best to keep his family. Fed and and such, sure. but it was just, mm -hmm. it was hard. Mm -hmm. It was sure. hard. I'm sure, I'm sure. Now, now uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump a little bit to to your mom. Now she was born in. Well, let, let me let uh, start but, because yeah, my grandmother ahead. started the family business, Richfield oh, you, oh, Farms. Oh, she did. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It, so it was a female started, started business. Started business with her. Wow. So it started with my grandmother. So no kidding. And, and that my daughter. I, we talk about Melissa uh -huh. all the time. Right. Right. So right. Melissa Nelcha. Schroeder. So oh, my grandmother's name Grandma. was Nelcha. So she started Richfield Farms in 1917. 17, wow. So you talk about 1917. Let's see. Whew. World War I, right? right? World War I, yeah. Uh, to 1918, mm -hmm. right? Right. Pandemic. Pa oh, Spanish yes. Spanish flu. Spanish pa flu. Pandemic. Yeah. You know, right. it's often compared to today. It is. Um, and that what she did is started a selling fruits and vegetables right. that her brothers and father would produce on the farm and would sell them out of a farm stand. So it was oh, okay. And that, uh, that there's also more lore in our family that yeah. where, <laughs> you know, she was young, probably in her late teens, maybe, or wow. mid teens. And that she was 
selling and it was the first day and she had some display cases and the father, you know, said, this is no place for a business. And like, again, this domineering Dutch father went through everything back on the truck. Oh my. And it was her, uh, her mother to the rescue. Oh good. Where just said, (laughs) Hey, you know, and that, uh, my mother, my grandmother was uh, single at the time. Right. And that where she bought a, a ring so that nobody would harass her. Oh, is that what she did? Yeah, she's a smart, <laughs> smart lady. Woman, yeah, she's a smart lady. But uh-huh. so that started Richfield Farms. No kidding! Wow, 1917. 1917. Yeah, she was just a little yeah. girl. Yeah. Wow. Well, she's young. Young. Yeah. Young. My goodness. So, wow, and that, that uh, she eventually got married, mm-hmm. and uh, where married my my grandfather, my and that they had a son, Carl, right, who was my father. Father, right, right, and my father married my mother. Right, you know they were young. Yeah, how you young? Know, they, were, I, I think uh, they met at they were sixteen. Sixteen. Wow. My father was a little older. Uh-huh. You know, but right. uh, and then got married, and then right. my mother came into the business. Wow, uh, it's amazing. Now she was born in, in, during the Depression. Nineteen was that? Uh, uh, the, no, the, yeah. no, they're nineteen twenty nine. Yeah. Yeah, she was born. Yeah. Back oh then. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was a hard time. Now, that was now something time. interesting is that my mother had two sisters, so okay. three girls. Three girls. Okay. Raised by a single father. Wow. So, he I mean, could you imagine back oh, then? My goodness. No. That where it's like here are three, uh-huh. girls, three girls, you know, <laughs> they didn't talk about stuff about girls back then. No. You know, there were no books, you <laughs> <No>. know, <laughs> so uh, you have raising three girls. Oh boy. My grandfather was a he, very patient man. He must have been. <laughs> he, he was, he was. Good for him. That's and great. then, so oh, after my, uh, my parents got married, my right. mom was put into, you know, working for the business right. and now all of a sudden she's working for the woman that started the business. Okay. And that uh, she still, my grandmother ruled the roost and Mm -hmm. my mother made a point of it that she would outwork any man or anybody that came into that business. Wow, look at that. And that to get the respect of my grandmother. Now again, we're talking about, you know, a it you know you can't really say like they're uh-huh. Dutch, they're Polish, they're right. German, they're, you uh-huh. know these days. But Dutch people were hard; yeah. they were hard. So yeah. hmm. anyway, yeah. so but she, but she knew her she knew the her goal was to you know be with you know ha- have the family. She wanted the respect, yeah, of the family and and, uh, and to provide. She right? wanted this respect. Yeah, that's wonderful. You, you know, know hope we're up against a break. We're going to finish with that story. Okay. On, some of the things that she did okay. in order to earn that respect <laughs> right. right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, PA. 
Sickles, Little Silver, New Jersey. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So, Len, you know we, we've uh, we've seen that your you know your mom becomes part of this uh, uh, farm land that she, they've acquired. Your grandparents. No, well, it was it was a market, a farm market, farm you know, market. produce, right? Yeah. And um, na- now, it's, there's going to be a transition, right? Right. A- into uh, a garden center. Right. Can you tell us what happened to make that turn over into a garden center? Well, you know, like a lot of produce places that, and that have become garden centers, that it was a holiday thing. So it's like, all right, we'll bring in azaleas for Mother's Day or we'll bring in, you know, if there weren't like growers like there are today, no. that there would be things that would force, they would force their own roses, that there were, there were things that were done to take advantage of seasonal dates you know right. so again mother's day um day. but i mean there were other dates that we forget about right like um there were days that are on the calendar now that we wonder what they were but back then <laughs> right. you know they were big important days like mm-hmm. for instance when the armistice was signed in for world war 1 I mean, that was an important day where people would sell poppies on the corners no kidding, of wow. the streets by, you know, just to for the significance of that day. And this is going back World War One, really? not World War Two. And that there were different days like that that we celebrated. You know, I mean, our crazy world that we live in now. We celebrate everything. <laughs> I don't know, or nothing. It's nothing. like, take that statue down. We don't want to oh, remember yeah. that. Yeah, you we're know, trying to get it's rid like, of history. It's like yeah. we're trying to. You know, she, I get rid of history, and that's right. Anyway, yeah. but that's another show. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so they tried to do anything that they could to, mm-hmm. to make their business better. Right. And like it, a lot of things in the second generation that slowly my parents began to take over. Mm-hmm. And my mother's name was Eleanor. Right. Okay. And that I can remember as a kid, you know, my father, it would be 10 o'clock. And that uh, she'd be, you know, she took care of the house. She did, like, she had all the full time job of working the business, but also had to maintain the house as wow. well. Wow. And I have three other siblings, and I'm the youngest. So that she had four kids, a house, and ran a business right. seven days a week. Now, the business was se- in, in another town, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. That it's probably about, 10, 15 minutes away. Okay. And that, uh, but we, you know, we often say, and as siblings, I talk, it's like, you know, we slept in Wayne, New Jersey. That was where our house <laughs> right. was. But we lived in Clifton where the business was. Oh, gosh. 
you know, we didn't have an office. We had a yeah. kitchen where we ate our mo- meals at yeah. the business. You know, Easter Sunday, I have, right. I can remember being a, a little kid making bows and foiling Easter plants. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just the way it was. That's right. You know, you didn't know any better. No, and that even though it was about five acres, wow. that was the farm. It was a farm. It was a farm to me. Sure. I one time had a friend come from like up in western New Jersey uh, who had dairy farms. Okay. And he came and was like, you said the farm, is this it? And I said, this is a farm, this is a store. But it was a, <laughs> and I was like, hey, this yeah. is a farm to me. Right, when dude. you have to pick a row of beans that's a mile long, right. it's a, well, not quite a mile, but <laughs> you know what I mean? That it's like, it's, uh-huh. it's a farm. Right, it is. Yeah, it is. But so my mom had to do all of these things and continue to work and to, and she did a lot with uh, annuals, oh, and it's amazing how many of the, in that area of Passaic County, where so many growers started, like the Van Windergans were in right. uh, that area, the Sullys were in that area, and now for, like, if you see Metrolina Greenhouses, sure. that's the Van Bremens. I mean, the Van Bremens wow. are now in, like, every part, every, they yeah. service everywhere in the United States. Is that something? And that they're uh, probably some of the biggest growers yeah. in the country. Right. So, and it was started right there. And That's my right. mom was one that was searching out and finding these growers so that they could start that transition to a garden oh, center. Wow, look at that. They sold fertilizer and they sold, I mean, those of you that are old time gardeners, you'll remember like when ortho came in like, right. m- I mean, it came in glass bottles. My goodness. And that I can remember as a kid, you know, barely being able to reach the shelf, telling people that they need to use orthene on their roses, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and like hoping that I wasn't going to drop it because yeah. I'd get killed if I dropped a bottle <laughs> yeah, of it. Right. But oh, uh, anyway, but amazing, isn't it? You know, and it's uh, it taught all of she taught all of her children how to work, mm-hmm. um, and also just a lot of lot of good life lessons, like from a lot of small businesses, sure. and we miss that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you do. She she wore a lot of hats. You know? Oh, she, absolutely. Yeah, amazing, amazing woman to to take all that on. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah, and you mentioned that you know on top of that, making mm-hmm. sure that her kids were raised mm-hmm. in a Christian home. Mm-hmm. Sure. You 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 keep calling her a teacher. I said, yeah. Julio, she wasn't a teacher. No, no, what did you tell yeah, me? You know, she's a teacher because she taught Sunday school at a Lutheran church, which I yeah, forget which Trinity Lutheran church. Lutheran church. That's right. You know, to yeah. me that, you know, whenever you teach, you're, you're a teacher. So, yeah. and, and I'm thinking, you know, oh, I can understand why, you know, Len loves to teach because, you know, she gets it from her. <laughs> I, guess, I guess so. <laughs> never, I never quite thought of that. Yeah. But, you know, it's just something that's, uh, that it instills in you different things. It does. But, you know, so, She's finally coming into her own to where she's out from under the thumb of my grandmother. Right, good. And that she realized that she needed to be independent as well. Mm-hmm. So she sure. was a modern woman in that family. In that, that time she, period, yeah. She understood that she needed to be financially independent wow. as well and pursued interests that really she was interested in. Uh-huh. There was little time. Like growing up, like I, remember, I we never went to the beach. We never went right. to the shore. We just worked. And it was just the way it was. I didn't know any different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once we hit our teens, we said, ah, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm going down the shore. Oh, is that what happened? There's girls there. <laughs> <That's right>. anyway, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, but still, my parents, uh-huh. seven days a week. Seven days a week. Yeah, yep. That was their life. I mean, that was, they, oh, yeah. they were surrounded by that life. Yep. And that's what they love to do. Yep. Yeah, it was yeah. Amazing, amazing. And it actually was for medical reasons that they finally started taking days off. As my dad, they said, like, listen, oh, yeah. you have to take a day take off. A day That's off. it. Yeah. You know, if you keep working this way, you can't work this can't way work. any longer. Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah. are at the age where you need to take That's one right. day off a week. And they always took off Monday. Okay. It felt an awful lot like work. Uh-huh. Because, you know, <laughs> what they would do is go around, look at property. They'd go and, uh-huh. and like, you know, buy things for the farm. Oh, it was. Oh, boy. It was just the way it was. Yeah, that's the way it was back then. Yeah. yeah it, so. And I think people now, mm-hmm. they kind of flip it where I live for right. my off days, right. you know, rather than living for my work. Right. You know, but there are some. The the, the independent business is still, is still, still alive. alive. Yeah. It's still alive. It is. it is. You know, it's amazing, you know, talking about Eleanor back then. Right. And uh, being a woman, 
you know, in business in that time period. It's oh, just, yeah. It's just amazing. It is. Yep. It is. And that, uh, mm-hmm. and it was out of respect. Oh, yeah. Because she, she did it. Um, I had uh, the newspaper asked some questions from me, yeah. and, I, and I told her, yeah. I was like, look, my mom was around before forklifts, and I can picture <laughs> my mother unloading a trailer load right. of lime mm-hmm. one bag at a time. Wow alongside the men mm-hmm. and that where the, when the men were done, they rested when she, when she was done, she went and cooked them dinner. Oh my goodness. You know? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, she was handling 50 pound bags of wow. lime one at a time, restacking girl. them in the business. Incredible. And that that's, but what it was the way it was the mm-hmm. way it was. Yes, the way it was. You know, I recently told a friend, uh, it's a female friend who, and she had calluses on her, on her hands. <laughs> oh, and gosh. she, she kind of like, was kind of trying to hide them. Okay. And, and I said, look, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you should be proud. Of, you have That's working right. hands. That's right. You have working hands. That's right. My mother had working hands. Yeah. My sisters had working hands. Yeah. My wife has working Correct. hands. Never, never, ever. That's right. Be embarrassed no, of, of a woman with working hands. That's correct. Now, she loved getting her nails done. Oh, Let me yes. make that real clear. <laughs> you know, she loved getting her nails done. Good for her. And she was a real lady. There you but were. She had to work with her hands, yeah, that's and that's right. the way it was. That's the way it was. Well, we we're, are we're up against a, the time yeah, clock here, huh, Len? So we'll be back uh, for our next segment, and we'll continue this uh, talk. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Before the weather gets too cold, now's the time to apply Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns. Grass absorbs the greatest amount of nutrients later in the season, just prior to the winter months. This 25-5-6 analysis also contains five micronutrients, boron, copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns builds hardiness, stem strength, and disease resistance, ensuring a healthy, stable plant which can endure the hardships of winter better than weaker plants. Lawns fed in the fall are first to green up in the spring. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Furlum's Winterizer for established lawns and expect to have the best looking lawn in the neighborhood. Church's Garden Center and Farms, Seashore Road, Cape May, New Jersey. Collegeville, do it best. Ridge Pike, Collegeville, Pennsylvania. County Line Nursery, Harleysville Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. 
Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Uh, we are not talking about plants so much today. No, we're not, but, yeah, yeah, but. I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a tribute to yes. uh, my mother, who was uh, this, one of the people who ran Richfield Farms, yes. uh, second generation, mm-hmm. and that uh, she passed away this week, and we're just uh, giving her a tribute to honor her. Yes, we are. One of the things that is really amazing, and I read it in the in the uh, journal, in a, some journalist I uh, wrote up north uh, in uh, one of the papers, right? Right. right. Yeah. I forget which one it was, but anyway, yeah. um, the record. Talk- the record. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. The record. Beautiful. It was a beautiful writing about uh, mom, and she was uh, quite a woman, as we, we've been telling you uh, so far. Yep. And um, you know that one of the things that they said is, you know, we're going to miss her because it's a great institution. That is in Clifton, you know, and, and I thought about that and I said, oh, my goodness, you know, here, here's a woman that, you know, they placed her name and she's she's built this solid foundation in Clifton mm-hmm. and build it up to what it is right now. Right. Passed it to, to my sister it and on. my brother. Yes. 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 You know? And that's a beautiful you know thing about a family business. Yeah. You know, a garden center like like Richfield. That you don't see anywhere, anywhere else. You well, know, it's it's pretty unique, huh, Len? What's interesting is it's a common story among garden centers. It is, it you is. know, where farming beginnings, produce, plants, right. and that they adapt and develop. And that uh, I would uh, ask everybody out there to go to your independent garden center and ask them about what their history is. How did they get started? Yeah. And that you'd be surprised of how many generations have been involved in this. Because right now, at Richfield Farms. So started with my grandmother, right. Nelcha, then went to my parents, Carl and Eleanor Schroeder, then went to my sister and brother-in-law, so Deborah and Jack Morton, and now it's being run by my nephew, their son, Will Morton, and Jessica Byrne, Jessica Morton Byrne, let me make <laughs> so it's a brother and sister. Wow. Are running it now, so it's still a generational thing, fourth generation, generation. and wow. that it's based on that hardworking foundation. Because so many businesses you hear, and the, and we used to get warned. My parents would warn us, and they really? would they would say shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves. And it's like, uh-huh. and I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I don't know what you mean. But what he was saying is uh-huh. that in one generation, that a business could get lost. Wow! But Isn't yet, that... through those war that being, oh my gosh, being the children uh-huh. of depression children right. that you know i mean you were you had the fear of god in you that That's you know right. you were one step away from wow. the next depression mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of scary right now it is yeah but uh again mm-hmm. those local businesses that don't have stockholders and don't have that they're trying to just be the one that are supporting the baseball team and are you know, are going to school with your friends or right. or your friends' children, that it's like the article said, it's like they're an institution in the community. Yes, yeah. And yeah. They're, a, they're a solid institution. I mean, right. you know, I mean Home Depot, yeah, Lowe's, Home, Lowe's, you know, they're, you know, Walmart. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, they're, they're required these days, but they certainly aren't, Start. They don't have the history in the community the way that your local businesses yeah. do. No, I, and I agree, and, and, and it's just a, you know, the way people, you know, are, are um, when when they go to a garden center, it's just, it's very specialized. It's very, you know, it, relational, you know, right? Because because of the family. I mean, right? Because you know, Richfield Farms still sells produce. Isn't that something? So they're being true to their roots. Where it's, right? I mean, I, I had to laugh because. Uh-huh. Um, an, an in-law, someone, actually it was Will's wife, Joanne. Oh yeah. Joanne. <laughs> hey, <laughs> anyway, she, she had said at one family meeting, like all we would talk about is corn. How oh. good is the corn? Oh, this corn is good. It's like, oh, <laughs> is that silver queen? Oh, I know. I think it's super sweet. You know, no, but I had a really good buy color. And she said, I can't believe I've never had a family and been at uh-huh. where all they talk about is corn. And like, wow. it's like, and I never like put two and two together. It's like, that's odd. You know, odd. <laughs> you, know like, you don't talk about corn. That's all we talked about. So yeah, how good the corn is this yeah. year or at the, at the, the uh, family right. picnic or that's family right. barbecue. 
barbecue or yeah. <laughs> it's running good right now. Mm-hmm. But th- and, that's yeah, where we amazing? came from. Yeah, and, you know, and it's passed on to you now because oh, you, know, yeah. you, c- you, know, you love plants and you talk about plants oh, yeah. all day. I, and, plants, you know. I tell you, when I'm buying corn, I look and I say, eh, that's not as good as the rich field. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So, you know, again, handing da- handing down, you know, yeah. all the all these things through oh, all yeah. the generations. Is, oh, it's and just, it, and uh, it's all amazing. those lessons and those those phrases. Mm-hmm. And that one thing that my mom has left me with, and it drives me insane, <laughs> even <laughs> though she's passed. Right. Like when you sit back and you're right. you're done with a job, and she's, you know, it's like, oh, well, it's good enough. She would say, like, "Good enough is the enemy of the best." Oh, oh look at that. I'm like, oh, oh. I, I was ready to sleep. You know, I was ready to <laughs> lay down. Right. Oh, here I go. Yeah, you crack know? the whip. Yeah, right? That's right. <laughs> Kick me in the butt. Get oh, going. I'll tell you what. Oh, uh, so those are but, the things. But that's made you, you the guy you are today. You know, with, with the character. <laughs> yeah, exhausted. You know? <laughs> 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 hey, you know, Mom would be proud of you today. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, she's probably saying, a "Good, well, good job, my my brother." Yeah, I'll tell you what. That was another thing. It's like you know that Dutch. That Dutch community, it's mm-hmm. like you know, you know, my wife, you know, uh-huh. came from the Dutch community where yeah. she is a hundred percent Dutch, and uh-huh. and that you know, you just kept your feelings and right. emotions close to your best. Your you know, you didn't, you didn't really, you right. know, you didn't really tell your true emotions. So. Yeah, yeah. But uh, all of those little lessons, mm-hmm. you know, like I, I often share with my siblings like there are times where i feel like i have the ghost of my father on my shoulder you know it's like you know (laughs) where it's like uh, why am i being why what it why am i thinking Uh that right anyway but do you see yourself you know like now you know uh having those kind of things yeah well i I mean carl's in the business with us now now, yeah your son your young uh, son yeah right and that now my Grandfather that was with my grandmother mm-hmm. that started the business was a Carl. My father right. was a Carl. How about that? You know, and now I've got a Carl. Now you got a Carl. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Carl's in the business, and I hope he's listening. Yes. And I think that's what my father mm-hmm. is thinking with me. He said, I hope he's listening. I don't think he is, <laughs> but I hope he is. But uh, I yeah. listen to everything, and I think Carl's doing the same. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. 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 You know, it's ha- you're handing the baton, you know, you kind of, you're kind of handing it, you know. That's it. And uh, you're giving the same kind of things that you've been giving. Yeah. You know? And that, that, and it's That's basically a opportunity mm-hmm. and you have to exploit those opportunities mm-hmm. because they don't come easy. No, they don't. They mm-hmm. don't come easy. And we see that from what what's happened through yeah. the generations. Any, any immigrant family that has mm-hmm. come, I don't care where you've come from, right. you know, any immigrant family that has come to this country looking for a better life. They're working hard. They and they are they're earning that and they are not any different just because my family was from Holland right. and like there's somebody's family from India. Right. They're all working to all right. to establish themselves yeah. to have a better life for their kids. Right. And and that's the beauty of it. You know, the, again the family, you know, the focus on the family, that is so big, you know. Right. So, so Len, we're, we're running up against time again. Uh, we're we're going to continue in our next segment. We're going to talk a little bit different, but, you know, uh, on our next segment. But we'll, we'll just transition into All a right. little bit more. Sounds good. Okay. Luke. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-685. 1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609 685 one eight eight zero, and we'll see you in the garden. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomers recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants 
and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. You know, Len, that um, as we, uh, as, and I, I've been with you for 13 years, right? And uh, Sandy has been probably a little bit longer than me. Yeah. And we've had Ed, and we have a lot of people coming in to, into our uh, garden center that know you well, have worked for you so many years. It's and, a family. It's a family, yes. It's a family. And, and that's what happens when you come into the garden center. You become part of, you know, the family of, of Len Schroeder. <laughs> and, um, Not Len Schroeder, of Bloomers. I mean, a it's bloomers. a Bloomers family because you're as much as a family to Sandy or to Becky. I am, and, yeah. And, I and, am. and, you know, it's, it's – uh, and that it's fostering – that ability to take care of where it's, you know, right. becomes more than a job. It does. That you're, mm-hmm. you're responsible mm-hmm. to the, to the person next to you working. Right. And we've, you know, certainly that, that I feel it and I know it. And I know my parents did too, that it created that, you know, I was, we were talking during the break about how there were at Richfield farms, there were generational families that would work from, you know, parents work, their kids had worked there at some point. Yeah. And like, I've had it where, you know, like we were just talking a little bit ago where there's, mm-hmm. there's family members where it, it's mother, daughter, granddaughter. Daughter, yeah. I've all worked at uh, Bloomers, but yeah. at Richfield Farms, it was the same thing. And that went on for generations, mm-hmm. generations. Generations. Wow. Wow. And yeah. you get to know people, you get to know, you, you, you know, the people around you. Oh yeah. Oh, it's amazing how, how it all comes together. Yeah. Isn't it? Yep. And it's funny to see kids now at bloomers where they'll come in as customers and they're like, you know, own their, their homeowners and everything homeowners. else. And they'll tell you, it's like, I remember I was afraid to go into that right. greenhouse because you used to have a scary Halloween display. And <laughs> yeah. when I was five years right. old, I went into it and I was scared and I would uh. never go back in there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I hold their hand and we walk yeah, back yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same thing mm-hmm. at Richfield Farms right. where there are generations mm-hmm. that go back now, really? family generations. And okay, we're in South Jersey. Right. One of the first customers I had, I was, I had a Richfield Farms truck, yeah. and he saw the truck, and he pulls in, and he goes, "Hey, Clifton! I went to Clifton High School, oh. Richfield <laughs> Farms. I know. I used to work there. Yeah. You know, and where? Wow, it's amazing to see the the impact that it the is. small business has on the community. It does. You know, Big time. I don't know if that you get that if it's like a chain store. You know, yeah. certain." To, you know, I work for that manager maybe, but sure. the institution itself, mm-hmm. it's something special. It is. It is. And that's the beauty of the garden center. And I think, you know, the specialty of it, the, the, the family uh, concerns, you know, the, um, the whole structure of how it's built. Right. I think that is so important. And that's what, you know, we, we give to, to the customers that come in. You know, we yeah. give them the same, you know, treatment. Yeah, and uh, and it just passes on. You know, well, they're not, they're not a customers; they're friends. They're friends, yeah. You know, friends, it's yeah. and that's that's how, you know, that's how I was raised. Yeah. You know, 
their customers they they have a need to fill but they also tell us about their children and their grandchildren and and they tell us about what's happening or i've been sick or you know i had cancer or i had you know i'm facing these issues my husband died you know and that uh you know, sometimes it feels like the doctor is in, yeah. <laughs> but it's, but it's also, it's those conversations that it's, uh, you know, Julio, I, I watch the way that you work with customers and it's a ministry It is that you, you treat employees and, and the customers as if that it's, a, it's a ministry and that you're ministering to that person. Yes. You're selling them the Arbor Vitae that they need. And everything they need to plan, but you're also mm-hmm. willing to to be there, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and I, and I and I see that in in, in you know in you Len and, and um you know your mom when she when I saw her she come in and uh, mm-hmm. during those special times I remember her when she came in during uh, Thanksgiving, you know with a big smile on her face. Oh, you yeah. know I remember those times and you know you say oh you know she drove all the way down you know oh yeah like, and she was in her eighties. I mean it was incredible. I was she insane. she wow. would watch our kids so that we. You know, Debbie and I could work, uh-huh. and she would come down and watch our kids during the spring when she couldn't work anymore, mm-hmm. and that uh, it would allow us to work. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, she'd be barreling down the turnpike in that Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still see her on that Lincoln. Yeah, that, yeah it's wonderful. You know, so, yeah, what a wonderful time. Yeah, yep. we we enjoy. Those are the things we enjoy. You know, from mom, from mom being there all the time with us and. You know, and, and and sharing these moments together. Yeah. You know? yeah, and I encourage everybody to ask their local garden center, "How'd you get started?" That's right. You know, or how you know, mm-hmm. because you'll be amazed the history and, and and story that you get. Right. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful a time. Yeah. Right. Well, we're up against the time again, Len. So we're gonna uh, uh, go on our message and then come back to you in our last segment. All right. Sounds good. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Barlow's Seagirt, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Monton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombs Farm and Greenhouse, Mechanicsburg, PA. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. 
Julio, we are talking about Richfield Farms mm-hmm. and yeah. my mother's legacy that she has uh, given to all of her children and grandchildren, yeah. and not to mention all of the others that have that have touched uh, over the years. Um, I'm thinking about as far as the lessons that mm-hmm. she learned and what was most important. It's interesting because I remember when my father passed away mm-hmm. and that they were pretty much out of the business. My sister and brother-in-law were running things at that point, Deborah and Jack Morton. And that where all of a sudden she got into things that were just a little, like, first of all, we always had big dogs. We were a big dog family. Big you know, when I'm growing <laughs> up, we had like German shepherds right. and things like that. And I remember all of a sudden she walked in with, mm-hmm. with uh, these tiny little, like, you know, frou-frou dogs. I was like, what the <laughs> heck is that? <laughs> Oh, gosh. You read in that article that she did Tai Chi. I know. She went to water aerobics. I'm like, what the heck that? happened to my mother? I don't That's... even recognize her anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're on a bowling league. A bowling league? What is that? You know? <laughs> no, you work seven days. You week, know, right, right. recreation was like almost like forbidden. Oh, my God. But uh, <laughs> it, it's interesting Super when right. she. Retired, she embraced that life. Oh, did she? And that taught, that's an important lesson for us to learn because if in her own husband that didn't know how to recreate, almost that it was shameful to recreate. And that that that, uh, generation that Mm -hmm. had gone through the the children of the Depression, a lot of them, they were were stuck into that mode. Now, I'll tell you what, the ambition that it caused in people was important. I mean, and they had that ambition, sure. but it was like, you know, you're on the church building committee? Yeah, really. <laughs> who, who are you? Yeah. You know, I figured you'd be, you know, you would die with a hose in your hand <laughs> watering plants, you know. Time, yeah. <laughs> but uh, she absolutely embraced oh, her yeah. retirement. Good for her, yeah. She, she understood that, you know, that rest is necessary. Uh, you know, <laughs> seven days a week, there, he, there's only a certain a certain, amount, a certain person that can do that. <laughs> she was in her late 70s before that kicked in, but still, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know. Good for her, did. you know. That's it wonderful. Did. I'm glad she, I'm glad she she, you know, she taught you all these lessons, that, you know, and has handed it to the to you folks, right? You know, to right. Uh, to continue that legacy that you know, she's and, had, and what that's a, a le- legacy is a good word because yeah. her biggest leg- legacy is that she raised four Christian children. Yes, she did. Yes, mm-hmm. and that that uh, her faith was very important to her. It is, yeah. and that it was not necessarily reinforced um, by the people that were around her, mm-hmm. and that she was strong enough, and that she was. Strong enough to do the physical work required Mm -hmm. at the business. She was strong enough emotionally to be able to force, you know, her, I guess, her will to want to raise Christian children. And that it's, uh, it's, it's something to, it's remarkable that again, another generation Mm -hmm. of strong businessmen. Now I've got to say that my sister, who, took over the business with her husband, Jack, that she's another strong woman. Another strong you know, woman we spent that. a lot of time this week with making, talking to funeral directors right. and doing, doing different things. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, both my sisters, uh, my sister Carol and my sister Deborah are amazingly strong women that have gotten that from their mom. Wow, look at that. You know, it just, yeah. again, it, it's, if we're parents, if we're uncles, friends of younger people, you sometimes don't realize the influence that you have. Use it yes, for use good, it. Mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, th- thank you, Len, for sharing, the, you know, these moments, uh, that, you know, with your mom, with your family and your friends. And uh, yeah. what, what a journey. What a journey oh, it it's is. been. You know? It is. And, um, and we continue that journey. That's you right. Know, to give it, you know, you're giving this to your to your family, right? To we're your friends and and you know so everyone around. Will Morton you. and 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 Jessica Byrne now yes. now the fourth generation at Richfield Farms. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. it is it is an amazing thing because you don't really hear that too often. No, you don't. No, places close really quickly nowadays. They and, do. And they go under. Yeah, we they know do. That. And it's hard mm-hmm. it, because it's hard work. It is. It's it hard is. work. It's like it's right. still, it hasn't gotten any easier. No, it hasn't. You know? No. And they have great perseverance. And, you know, and they, you you folks encourage people. You, you love people. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, we, we see it because, you, you know, your actions show it. 
yeah. we thank you for for the garden center yeah. bloomers home and garden center and richfield farms that's right what a, what a beautiful place to to go folks that's why we go to garden centers you know what a special place to be you know and, uh, and to work and to be around and, right uh, we we enjoy that it's it's there yeah. they are beautiful places to visit they are you know yeah. so and i had a lady come in the other day a friend of friend come in she, oh you know i had to come in right because I want to be, you know, around plants, Yeah, you know, and, and right. thank God, you know, for bloomers that she was able to come in That's and, nice. and enjoy those plants. Yeah. And of course, you know, taught by my mother and grandmother. Right. I hope she bought something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right. But I digress. <laughs> We're up against a break. Yeah. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, we are back in the garden. Thank you, uh, thank you, Len, for for the uh, sharing your life with us. Yeah, and, um, it's it's an honor. And and the, the, your mom is is so gracious and loving, and uh, I'm I'm glad was. that we got to meet her and uh, and uh, share those moments with her. Yep, she, so, she'd uh, be she'd be a little embarrassed, but uh, oh, yeah. she's earned it. <laughs> yes, she has. <laughs> Hey folks, if you're uh, if you buy Richfield Farms in Clifton, please go in and, and uh, just say hi to the folks there, and because they they really care about you know all you folks out here, and and, um, and just uh, give them a big hug. There. <laughs> there you go, there you go. We we appreciate it, and thank you for allowing me to indulge this uh, hour about our family legacy. Yes, and that uh, it's important, it and is. it's amazing how contemporary it is. It is it strong, is. strong women. women. Leading the way. Yes, they are. Thank you, Brett, for uh, being with us today. All right. And we'll see you next week. We'll be all about plants. Call the hotline if you got questions. We'll be back in the garden with you next week at this time. See you in the garden. See you in the garden. See you in the garden.